Hi, I'm Louise and this is my video response to the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge nomination that I received from my friend Arlene. You'll notice that I am sitting in the comfort of my living room. I do not have my feet in a bucket of cold water and there are no buckets around me to be thrown over my head. It's not because I don't want to do the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Um, if that was the case, I would either ignore the nomination or I would write a check or post an angry rant on Facebook. It's because I can't <clears throat> do the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. I think the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge has been incredible. It's raised millions and millions, tens of millions of dollars for various charities, including ALS and motor neuron disease and cancer research. And I've watched with complete admiration and a little bit of amusement as my friends and family members have thrown buckets of cold water, ice and snow over their heads. So two enthusiastic thumbs up to everyone who's done it so far. Um, but I won't be doing it. I wanted to take a little bit advantage of the opportunity and raise awareness of a cause a little bit closer to my own heart. The reason I can't do or won't be doing the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge is because in March of this year, I was diagnosed with something called Long QT Syndrome. Long QT Syndrome is a very rare genetic disorder that affects the heart's electrical system. What it basically means um, is that my heart struggles to recover from beating sometimes. And this means that sometimes it's not ready to beat again. And so it can stop. This can cause fainting, it can cause dizziness, and in really severe cases, it can cause sudden death by cardiac arrest. This has been quite a frightening thing for me to deal with. It's been quite a lonely time. It's been a real shock to my system. And it's meant, for me, some pretty huge lifestyle choices, or changes, rather. I've given up <clears throat> competitive sports, no more soccer, no more running, no cardio exercise, really, of any kind, certainly no swimming, and not even allowed to do the simple things like go for a walk in the park on a warm summer's day by myself. Cardiac arrest is a constant threat for me and I wasn't going to increase the risk by throwing a bucket of water over my head and forcing my heart to accelerate and possibly stop. So I'm not going to nominate anybody else. I'm not going to ask you to donate money to a charity and I'm not going to ask you to do anything stupid on the internet. I'm going to ask you to do two things. The first thing is, is be aware that there may be people around you who are suffering in silence with something that you can't see. There are so many diseases that don't have obvious symptoms or side effects. Diabetes, depression, anxiety, some kidney diseases, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome and heart diseases like prolonged QT. I don't have any visible symptoms and in fact at this stage in my life I actually feel healthier than I've felt possibly ever. But I have a disease that you can't see and it's scary and sometimes, sometimes I need help and there are so many other people out there who do as well so take a moment and Think about a friend that maybe could use a little bit of extra help from you. The second thing you can do, and this to me is the most important of all, is consider learning, if you don't already know, consider learning first aid and how to give CPR. It only takes 
a day or a day and a half to undergo a course. You can do it all across the world. You can do it via the Red Cross, here in New Zealand through St John Ambulance, in the UK via St Andrews, <coughs> through basically most workplaces offer courses, um, YMCA's offer courses, you can learn it anywhere. Just Google first aid course and put your area and you will find a course. Because the thing is, is that people like me with silent diseases are depending or could depend on the help from strangers. I could go into cardiac arrest here at home or I could go into cardiac arrest in the supermarket when I pass you with my trolley or at the cinema, at the mall or watching game of football. The reality is, is that you could be the person who saves my life. It only takes one day to learn CPR. But you could save someone's life and give them many, many more days, many more years with their loved ones. So if you've taken the time to watch my video to the end, please consider learning first aid and CPR. Because one day my life could depend on you knowing how to help me. Thank you.